I told you they were gonna be obstacles. <laughs> So, you're on your quest, ready to figure out what's in the woods. But what if something happens? There may be unexpected situations that make you change your path and take you through different routes. If you get lost, how are people gonna find you? Or if you arrive to your goal, how are people gonna follow your steps if your original map had important changes? One of the most important characteristics about science is that every hypothesis must be verifiable by the scientific community. In other words, your study must be replicable. This guarantees that everyone can test your hypothesis following the same methodology. So clarity and honesty are essential. However, in the previous video, we suggested that even with careful preparation, we cannot account for every possible obstacle or unexpected circumstance. Besides, we can be deceived either by our own perceptions or by the way we deploy our thinking abilities. We can be the victims of the illusions of tricksters, or we could be tempted to be the ones using the tricks. And lack of practice of rational thinking may lead us through inadequate paths. In the process, we may encounter fears, insecurities, and a bunch of other little monsters that live in the woods. How do we keep an honest scientific narrative with so many obstacles to confront. And why is honesty so important? I think I'm honest anyway. What makes you think that I won't be? Well, first of all, honesty is the foundation of trust. If we are going to accept the conclusions of science, scientists need to be trustful. When there is dishonest behavior and lack of transparency, it's hard to believe and take anyone seriously. And second, you're right. We need to be careful in assuming the intents of other people and whether they're honest or not. But there are reasons to believe that us as humans are prone to faulty reasoning, deception, and a lot of psychological and social pressures. Cognitive biases, fallacies, and questionable research practices are all too common sources and forms of dishonesty. Let's take a look. We want to believe we're rational, but we make a lot of irrational judgments. Perhaps your hypothesis is that all possible birds in the woods can fly. Because of this, you actively look for flying birds and count them as evidence of your hypothesis. But at the same time, you may unconsciously ignore areas of the woods where non-flying birds may appear, and if you saw them, you may ignore them. Unconsciously, but still. You may also look at the cloudy sky and say that it's always cloudy in your town, in spite of the fact that cloudy days are quite rare. When our judgment of the world is distorted due to habitual or efficient modes of thinking and perception, we are experiencing cognitive biases, which are a form of adoptive thinking, by the way. In the first example, by only paying attention to the information that supports our beliefs, we are demonstrating our confirmation bias. In the second example, we evaluate reality based on the most available information, it being cloudy, which is a case of the availability bias. You can think of cognitive biases as automatic computer programs that allows us to make quick decisions to save time and effort. But when we are exploring the woods, we should not operate in autopilot. We must do every effort to remain in control. It's not easy, of course. This is one of the things that makes scientific thinking so costly. Daniel Kahneman, a cognitive psychologist and Nobel Prize of Economics, dedicated his career to recognizing biases that impact our decision-making. In this regard, Kahneman said, a general law of least effort applies to cognitive as well as physical exertion. The law asserts that if there are several ways of achieving the same goal, people will eventually gravitate to the least demanding course of action. In the economy of action, effort is a cost, and the acquisition of a skill is driven by the balance of benefits and costs. Laziness is built deep in our nature. It's part of us, but we must fight it for the sake of honesty. How to fight it, you ask? 
Keep an eye on your dashboard where all the automatic programs are running and make sure that they are not activated when you're doing science. If you want to know what all the programs in your dashboard are, take a look at this website. It's an excellent manual of operation. And if you want to go deeper, Kahneman's book Thinking Fast and Slow is an excellent resource too. Now, you can keep your mind in check, but there are cases in which you may err not because of pre-programming, but because of tricks. In exploring the world, you will run into people who have different beliefs and ideas about what reality is. And that's perfectly fine, we all see the world differently. The problem is that in defending a position about reality, we can make a statement seem true with help of some spells or tricks called fallacies. Fallacies are argumentative devices that disguise reality and distract our attention. For example, attacking the person rather than focusing on the argument. That is the ad hominem fallacy. Or making the argument look weaker than it actually is and then disregard it for being weak. That is the straw man fallacy. Or stating that something must be true just because a lot of people believe that it is, without actually testing if it is in fact true. That is the ad populum fallacy. And there are many, many others. There's lots of tricks. But fear not. If you don't want to be deceived, there's something you can do. Learn the tricks. There are way too many fallacies for us to cover them here, so you're gonna have to learn them by yourself. But you can learn about the most common ones on this website. Once you learn them, you can use your scanner to detect if the argument is a trick or a valid idea. Now, be careful when you learn the tricks. You don't want to become the trickster. Remember, it's all about being honest. Lack of honesty at the level of the individual may develop into serious problems at the level of scientific community and humanity at large. So, besides our cognitive and argumentative strategies, we should also keep our actions and practices on check. Questionable research practices have become a hairy issue. There are several circumstances that have made the scientific endeavor depend on incentives. At the beginning, the incentive is a grade, but later it is a title, a position of power, grants, you name it. Incentives are fine to a certain degree, but they can interfere in our scientific goals. In your quest, you may confuse the original goal with the incentive. In other words, in your attempt to obtain the carrot, you may completely forget about the science and care only about the carrot. That's not good. Incentives may turn your quest into a competition that makes you care about winning at all costs and not about understanding reality. In the scientific world, it translates into different forms of questionable research practices or cheating. You may be tempted to purposely pick and choose the data that accommodate to your hypothesis and hide everything that goes against it. This is known as cherry picking. You may also be familiar with the famous p-value, or infamous. Roughly speaking, this is a statistical measure to determine whether your data actually accounts for your hypothesis. Manipulating your data to make it seem like you have reached statistically significant levels is called p-hacking. And stating as a hypothesis a fact that you had already tested is called harking. Now think of this, if you copy bit by bit, a piece of art, and said you created the whole thing, is that honest? What if you misquote someone else's words? What if you paraphrase someone and make it seem like your own ideas? Or maybe you're using your old ideas but presenting them as new. These are all cases of plagiarism, using and appropriating ideas of others or yourself without giving due credit. Sometimes those come as mistakes, especially at the beginning, but there are many other more severe cases. Either way, it is dishonest and you should avoid it. Again, there are many ways of plagiarism that we cannot address in this video. But take a look at this infographic. It is another helpful resource to keep in your bag. These are all questionable research practices that tend to emerge when we lose focus on what our goal in scientific practice is. So keep this in mind. It's not about the grade, it's not about the title, the grant, the position of power. The prize is the expansion of knowledge. 
If your hypothesis happens to be wrong, that's great! You can discard an idea that was incorrect and keep looking for a better explanation. That's an important contribution to the expansion of knowledge. Okay, there's obstacles, cognitive biases, fallacies, questionable research practices. What do we do? Ha! I thought you'd never ask. Let me show you. The Open Science Foundation is working really hard on fomenting best practices in research. For now, here's two strategies that you should adopt. First, before embarking on your adventure, make your whole plan and map available to your peers. This is called pre-registration of your report. With your registered report, the scientific community will offer you feedback, will have a means to find you if you get lost, and will keep you accountable when you come back with your results. Second, use your quill to have a log of your activities. Once you're on your adventure, you should keep a record of the obstacles, changes in your path and adaptations. What made you change? Why did you choose one change over another? Did you increase the amount of data you needed? Anything else the world needs to know? But this is not like your typical secret diary. It should be an open notebook, available to anyone who needs to track your path. And remember, not only you are following the path of great thinkers and explorers, at the end of your journey, it was going to be you the one who guides someone else who's coming behind you. So make sure that you have a clear path to them. We have seen some obstacles that have to do with thinking and action. But there are huge hurdles that, although seem less obvious, may have a strong impact on your journey. Let's take a look inside. In your journey, you're going to have to work hard to solve problems and solve problems that emerge when you solve the initial problem and solve more problems that emerge when you solve the original problem and more pro Well, you get the idea. It can be exhausting and sometimes even discouraging. Some of those problems emerge as little inconveniences, small responsibilities, but you should not ignore them. They grow bigger and bigger and when you least expect them, they get you. Some of these problems are intimidating, and if you let them, they'll petrify you. These are obstacles of the mind. Little monsters that inhabit the woods and take advantage of your weakest moments. You should not underestimate them. Anxiety, procrastination, imposter syndrome, helplessness, and other experiences are psychological forms of these little monsters. They can affect your whole journey mess with your dashboard, disrupt your scanner, confuse your map, impersonate your guides, and shatter your mirror. It is normal to feel discomfort as you confront the challenges of your adventure. But don't confuse growing pains with ignoring your mental health. Crucial to a healthy scientific practice is healthy individuals. Take care of yourself. It is inevitable to be flawed and to encounter many obstacles to overcome, but we can be aware of those flaws and prepare ourselves to address potential obstacles. After all, if we're really committed to finding out what's there that we don't know, we should strive for honesty. Today, we review different kinds of obstacles that you'd encounter in your endeavor. You have your dashboard to keep an eye on your cognitive biases. You have your scanner to detect tricksters and fallacies and you have your quill to avoid questionable research practices. Besides, you know that little monsters in your mind can affect you deeply, so you should take care of your mental health while you're exploring the world. When you come back from your journey, you'll have an exciting story to tell. How to tell that story will be the topic of our next video. For the moment, it's time to fight some dragons. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.